he's big in America, he's big in the UK, he's got a million odd followers. That's it, and the thing with Paddy is he understands how it works, he knows he's a big name, he knows he brings, oh, he's only had two fights in the UFC, but he knows he brings in views. <laughs> Looking around the place and stuttering and laughing and nervous laughing. Winning this one will sort of solidify me as the, the next big thing to come out of Wales. That's just how it is, without sacrifice, the, the rewards don't come. It wouldn't be out of the ordinary, like... I, Maybe five years ago, I'd be like, nah, that's not going to happen. But <laughs> nowadays, you just don't know. See, we see some kids in the gym, and you can tell they're, they're natural-born scrappers. They love it. They, they can't wait to spar. It's a tough old sport at the end of the day, especially for a kid. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's not, not easy on the body. It, like, since he's got in Bellator, especially, like, he's really, like... Focused in and on a plate, my weeds lay flat. Listening to a strally bang. If it's me and losing, keep them moving like a caravan. She fed to at the back door. Get the rest of the trap for some man that got a trap shit till I knock them in like I'm Jack Shore. Rolls hat, rolls back, my flow shack like a hacksaw. Getting off. Yeah, it's episode four. Episode four. We're joined by uh, the lovely Joe Robbins and. The even more lovely Levi Bachelor. Thank you. <laughs> He's thrown out all the compliments at the minute. I'm in a good mood, that's where it is. Yeah, what's making you in such a good mood? I don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing special. Still waiting on some fight news. Uh, go week of training, maybe. In fact, uh, and it's over, I suppose. Friday. Yeah, it's so. Friday. you got to be happy on a Friday, boys. Happy day. So, yeah, UFC London's been announced. What are you thinking? Yeah, 23rd of July. Um, officially announced. I think Aspinall is officially announced. Darren Till's officially announced. Um, I know there's rumours that Molly's been matched. Um, who else did I see? Paddy, there was a matchup for Paddy floating about against um, some, what's his first name, Ottoman Azatar, I, th I oh, think. Right, sorry, um, yeah. But <coughs> I've I seen Paddy come out on Twitter and say that uh, he's not, it's the first he's heard of it, so wh wh whether he's, he's double bluffing us or whether um, that is the case. I think it was the. Everyone's probably seen it by now. The the video with Dana um, doing an interview on t on TV or a podcast, and uh, there was <coughs> the fight wall in the background. Um, oh, yeah. There was Nate Diaz and Chamayev on there. There was um, Adesanya and Kananier, um Strickland and Pereira. So uh, we don't really know if they made fights or if they fights they want to make or if their fights is in the works. But yeah, based on that wall, I think Paddy and and. As a ties is what they're looking at. Whether, whether it happens, we, we we don't know. But yeah, good fight as well. I mean, not to go off on a, on a tangent, but he's good, dangerous. He's a dangerous guy. That as a I, yeah. I don't think he, has, he hasn't fought for two years. He's famous for the um, the Fight Island incident, where obviously when we was in Fight Island, it's an isolated hotel and and sort of area, and um, I think he cut off his wristband to give to to someone or someone like climbed a balcony or something to give him something that was in a bag to still to this day. Oh, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still to this day, no one knows what was in the bag and, and it got his fight cancelled. Um, Dana said he'd never fight in the UFC again. Obviously, that it's looking like that's not the case. But uh, yeah, he, he's a good guy. Hasn't fought for a little bit, but he can bang. He's got a lot of first round knockouts. Um, and it's a good test for Paddy. It's a, it's a, if it is going to happen, obviously, I think it's a good step up because... It's not a case of being chucked straight in the deep end to the to the top fifteen, or you know, people like Cowboy or Lozon or those type of people with the big names. But um, yeah, it's it's a good, it's the right step up. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not even sure why his record is in the UFC. I don't think he may even be undefeated in the UFC this as a task. So I it, think this this one for Paddy now, and then they'd be looking to throw him in with some names, aren't they? Even if it's someone who's like on the decline, isn't it? Yeah, I think. They're obviously gonna they're gonna build him in there because he's such a big star. Um, I did a podcast with Arnold Allen and Abs Talks. Shout out to Abs. Um, last no, not last week. Sorry, I did it on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. And um, Arnold made a good point. He was like, you know, I, I, you don't really need to build Paddy much more because he is a star. You know, he's not like um, he needs to be built into this this nationwide star because he is. He, he's big in America. He's big in the UK. He's got a million odd followers. You know, he's got his podcast, he's got a bar stool deal, so he, he already is a star, and um, he's had two very good wins, so it, it's time now, and it's the right time probably for him to start moving him um, in the right in, in the upward sort of direction against the tougher boys, and I know he said he's not going to fight the top 15 for the money he's on, and if he if he's making what the, the, the reports are saying, then yeah, it's, it's, it's a fair comment, so I'll, I'm sure he wins this when he'll have a nice new contract. Anyway, I know they're not going to want him... Uh, 
going to Bellator or anywhere like that, are they? Especially no. with the the publicity and, and the views he brings. So it's a good fight. You know, it's a striker grappler kind of match. Um, and he'll answer a lot of questions for people who, who don't necessarily, you know, we've seen, I've seen Paddy fight for years, you know, in, in cage wars. He's, he's, he's not afraid of tough fights. He fights, he's fought Nad, you know, saw him back. Um, the last two guys in cage wars he fought were good level guys. And uh, he's, he's not ever been wanting to shy away from a tough fight. So it's just a case I think he wants to get get paid to take yeah. the tough fight. So you can't blame him. And uh, if if the fight is on, again, we're, we're talking based on um, what we've seen on that interview. If that fight is happening, then I think it's a very good matchup. And one that if he does win, is going to push him towards um, towards even bigger things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I think that's kind of what he needs at this point, isn't he? Because a lot of people are fighting... Like massive fights on crap contracts, aren't they? Like at the end of the day, if you like fighting one of the best in the world for like twenty k or whatever, it doesn't really make sense, does it? That's it. And the thing with Paddy is he understands how it works. He knows he's a big name. He knows he brings. All right, he's only had two fights in the UFC, but he knows he brings in views. And you know, he's not. It's in my opinion, and I, and I felt the same way until I had my most recent contract. It's not out of out of out, out of the ordinary for him to ask for more money to fight the better guys. That's how it works. You know, if if you was Playing football in the in the championship, and then you got promoted to the Premier League. I, I would guess the players are, are going to want a a little bit of a pay rise to be playing the better teams. You know, same in all sports. The, the better level you play or fight fight at, the more money you got. You know, you're not going to want look at boxing for example. You're probably going to want more money to fight uh, Canelo than than you would some guy who's ranked maybe twentieth yeah. in the, in the division. So yeah, he's within his rights and. I think they they know where they go with him. They know he's a big star, so they'll uh, they're, they're more than likely gonna gonna pay him more he asks for. Yeah, but when he gets into it, then like, what, do you, what sort of how many fight contract do you tend to get when you first get in? It's usually four, four, five. Uh, mine was four. My, my my second one was four. I'm on another new contract. Technically, I'm on my my sort of third contract, so to speak. But uh, yeah, it's usually four fight deal. They can renew it at any time. I think if you lose. If you're coming off a loss, they can they can sort of cut it at any time. Um, so yeah, I if he wins his third fight, I would guess they probably won't bother with the fourth, and they're not going to make him fight out his contract because of who he is. I would guess that they'll uh, they'll just come to him and offer, and then it's down to to him and Graham then to uh, yeah, to yeah. to decide whether they're happy with the offer or, or whether they want a little bit more more money. But um, speaking from personal experience Graham's a very good negotiator so I'm sure you'll get uh, you get a nice deal and Barstool are paying him fucking well anyway and they yeah, let's be honest he, he deserves it though like for his name and value and everything isn't it yeah he does I mean look at I think if you look at the, I think Dana said it that the London like the views are the way in and starting Paddy's views like tripled the, the main and the co-main so and that's not a knock on the co-main and the main event guys is just to, to show how, how big a star he is. He, he's more of a, you know, he's a big name outside of the sport, didn't he? Not just he's not just known for being a fighter. He's got his, he's got his personality. He's doing a little bit of a press tour in America. Um, we've seen him at MSG. We've seen him on on food truck tires with Brendan Sharp. So he's uh, he's doing all the right things to, to make sure that he is a big, you know, continues to be a big star. So yeah, he, he, if he is only on twelve and twelve, like the report said, he, he definitely deserves more. Hundred percent, mate. You went over yeah. to Vegas with Jack, yeah. didn't you? What was yeah. that experience like for someone? Oh, you know? It's fucking awesome. Like, you go out there. Uh, I've been to Vegas once, like previously for that for for Marshman's fight, but like going over there for the UFC, obviously during the pandemic as well. It was yeah. a completely different experience. Out the way a bit, you know, in the fight hotel, going to the PI, things like that. Just for someone my my sort of level, my age, to to go there and you know go to the PI and things like that. It's phenomenal, like yeah. I bet it shows you what's possible, like in the future and things. Then as well, and it shows exactly, you, like, yeah. What you and, could be doing and, and the um, the sort of thing that like Shaky and and, and Carl and I were saying, for, like you know, touch wood, I I get to that level. I'm going there. I'm not starstruck by uh, by everything. I I can sort of go there and and like I've I've taken it all in already, sort of. But um, you know, if I go there and, and fight for myself, then I'm going there. And I'm getting the job done. I'm not like. Oh, I'm in the PI or anything like that. It's yeah. like, you know, I'm just there, and it's it's just it's just business at the end of the day. But um, yeah. yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I had a, had a had very similar experience with Marshman. I mean, I was a little bit further on in my career than what when more Levi is at the minute. I think I was uh, three or four and I was a pro, and Marshman had me cornering for one or two fights in the UFC. And 
like you said, you you get a feel you get a feel for the the fight week and the fighter hotel and how it sort of works out, out the back and in the changing rooms and stuff. But before having to do it yourself, you no, know, it's probably very daunting to go in there. You know, for your first, like like look at look at Jack and Brett for example, they'd never experienced it before, and they sort of had to go in there and and they've. Their first time, they were almost learning on the job. They they didn't know what to expect. Whereas I was fortunate to um to experience before I had to go through it myself, and vice versa. So yeah, it's, it's gives gives the young well not necessarily the youngsters, but it gives them a good good chance to see what's to come and and and, and know sort of what the crack is, what to expect because it is very different. Like you compare UFC fight week to say a cage warriors fight week. Like in cage warriors, you're you're in the house up until. The day of the fight. If you are doing media, you know you do you're doing it on your phone or, or on your laptop. You, you you got the comforts of cutting weight, you know, in your own house or in your local leisure centre or in the gym. You got the comfort of sleeping in your own bed and being with your family and and the missus up, up until the day of the fight. Whereas, sort of when you go to to the UFC, you know the UFC could come to Cardiff now and we'd still have to go to to an hotel for the week because you got to check in and and and. There's a lot, lot of media that, that goes with it that people don't understand. You know, like the last fight, I think the Wednesday, it was pretty, it was pretty much media nonstop. All we checked in Tuesday, and then it was, it was just media nonstop all day Wednesday. It's not like you go up there and get to sit down and relax all week. It is nice to be isolated in a sense, but at the same time, there's, there's a lot to come. So to get a little insight on eyes, obviously, when he does get there, it's gonna, it's, it's just gonna benefit him. Yeah, like the first time you do anything in it, like your first day in school, your first day. <laughs> I don't know, going to the gym, I expect, like, yeah. all them firsts are always, like, full of anxiety, aren't they? Yeah. So I expect you shake that off, and the next time, like, it just takes a lot of stress. Well, it comes second like, nature, doesn't it? Like yeah. you said, the more you do something, the more comfortable you get. Um, someone chucks a mic in front of your face, like, you watch my first Cage Warriors uh, pre-fight trailer, it was fucking awful. <laughs> I was <laughs> looking around the place and stuttering and laughing and nervous laughing, and, like, by the, by the time you get to the end of it to now, I, you know, second nature, you know... You know what they're looking for. You know, you know what camera you're looking at. What the type of thing they want you to say, the way they want you to say it. So it's just practice of anything, and um, yeah, it's, it's all it's all good practice. You know, it's he's obviously it's not going to be the first, the last time he does it, but at least he knows what's to come now this time. Yeah, definitely, mate. And great performance back in what, what month was it? Now was it? April was it? March. March was yeah, it? Yeah, the end, last was, last week of March it was. flown by, innit? Yeah, Feels yeah. Like so yesterday. if anyone watching, obviously, don't know Levi is the current. Um, Cage Warriors Academy Wales Bantamweight Champion. Technically, he's the South West or South East, South East. Champion yeah. as well because the boy he just beat had that belt. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, he, had, he had a good, tough fight. Um, Joe, me and Joe was there. A um, couple of drinks were flowing, so, you know, <laughs> it was, uh, I don't, I can remember it, but probably not in as much detail as he can. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it was, it was a really good fight. Uh Toughest fight to date, probably, would you say? Yeah, probably up it's up there is this one and my, and my last one before that I was up there with a the, you know, the title fights. So I, I didn't have any easy fights to win the belt. Um but yeah, they were they were tough, but in my last fight I, I let my hands go a bit and uh you know, I got that confidence a bit now to to let him let him loose and um you know, I'm not I'm not just that, that one trick pony that everyone's seen so up up until now. It's just I go in and I grind them out with the wrestling and the and you know sort of the wall work and things like that. But but now I got other things for people to worry about. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. I always say that as well. I I had like a a similar thing. You know, I was for a long time like when you're just wrestling and submitting people, people sort of just assume that that's all you got. And then you know you come up against a guy then that um, like I came up against a guy who was a, was a judo Olympian back early on in my pro career and it wasn't going to be easy to take him down so I had to stand and strike and you know you you fast learn that you're not made of glass and you fast learn, like you know he said with his last fight he learned that when he let his hands go there's good results behind it you know the you always sort of go back to your your base which is his, his wrestling and grappling but like he said he let the hands go and he does fucking it hard so that the, the fact that he was letting his hands go probably made his wrestling look better anyway in my opinion I mean he took this boy down he, a lot easier than he took the last boy down, but this boy was was probably a a better wrestler than the kid before. But yeah. because he was laying the hands, going hurting him on the hands, that the, the kid had no option but to just embrace the wrestle and embrace the grind a little bit. So it was a really good performance and um, yeah, good builder. Good, you know, yeah. let everyone know his level. I could see you were tense during the fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you said to me at one point, "Don't film me." Like, <laughs> you, know, you were like, "Yeah, I always get." I, I'm 
I'm worse for the boys, to be honest. I don't feel too nervous for myself. I'm not... So I think with with MMA, although it's a team sport, you know, you couldn't get ready about your team. In, in my opinion, when you fight, like, it all falls on me. So it's like, if, if I go out there and, and don't perform, then, then it's on me. If I go out there and perform and, and fight, like, I know I can fight, I know I'll be all right, win, win lose, or draw. Whereas when the boys are fighting, it's the same, but the ball's in their court. You know, I... As good as we know he is, as good as I know Rowan is, as good as I know Brett is and Josh, you know, I can't control how they fight. If they go out there and have an off day or if they go out there and, and make a wrong decision or if, if they go out there and decide they're going to bang it out and they should wrestle or wrestle and they should, should bang I can't control it. So it's almost, it's like the fear of the unknown. You don't know what's going to happen because you're not the one in this. For some reason, when I'm in there, I feel as if... I'm in control and, and in my own head, I, I'm controlling the situation a bit. Whereas with the boys, you haven't got that control. And I think that's, most people will probably tell you the same thing. Most fighters will tell you they get more nervous for, for their friends and their teammates fighting than, than they do themselves. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a ropey nine minutes, especially then when Rowan, Rowan straight on afterwards <laughs> as well then. Yeah. Building was bouncing though, wasn't it, at the end? Yeah, yeah good yeah. atmosphere, cracking atmosphere. It, it always is in Ebervale. It's, it's a really good atmosphere, a really good show. Obviously, m- my old man, Colin, of built it back from the from when it was pain pit back in 2010 or whatever. So you're talking, you know, these two have got 12 years of experience of, of putting a show together. It's just the fact Cage Warriors have put their name to it now. And uh, it just gets a little bit more publicity because of because of the name. But um, it's, it's always run well. It's always well-matched fights. And uh, when, when are they back now? July? June? Uh, yeah, June 25th will be the next one. So seven weeks tomorrow. Um, I'll, be, I'll be main event in that. Uh, against Yaya McKenzie, he's the current uh, Cage Warriors Wales featherweight champion. I'm obviously the uh, the Cage Warriors Wales bantamweight champion, so that'll be for uh, for me to get the two belts, two division champ. Um, it is a tough fight, don't get me wrong, uh, but I, I think he is overlooking me a little bit. Um, he's obviously match up wise, he's he's very similar to me. He's he's, he's hard to match. You got guys pulling out fight week and stuff, and the same has happened to me. Um, so I think it makes sense for us to both fight each other. And um, cor- correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure if anyone else has ever been a, a two-division champ in, in, in Cage Warriors Wales or even back in the pain pit days. But, no, um, I, don't think, I don't think so. May, oh, actually, maybe... Um, what's his name? Uh, Mitch Good? Mitch, Mitchell Good, did he have? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he had the middleweight, yeah. then he won the like, heavyweight. Yeah, but, yeah, of course. But, but still a massive... A yeah, massive it's, accolade it's, for it's it, especially when anyway. having and having that, that Cage Warriors branding behind it now as well. It pushes you on for the for the future. And it's it's a big fight in Wales because, like you said, y- Yian's the fairweight champion, Levi's the bantamweight champion. I think they're both in the Welsh squad um, for for the IMAF as well. I, I know it's different age groups or whatever, but uh, you know, it's no no way to hide in, yeah. in 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 that show. You, you know, if, if you want an easy fight, it's the wrong show for you. You're better off going to to these shows. You know these two pop shows where you can get your record padded for you. You know it's what, what are you now five and zero or four five and, and five, five and zero. I think yeah. y- y- Yian's seven and three, seven and three on a couple of fight win streaks. So it's a good clash. It's it's the right fight to make. You know when I was when I was coming up in the amateur scene, I was the same. You know the whole point of amateur is not about being flawless and having and having an easy fight every time because the reality of it is when when you go pro, no one remembers your amateur record anyway. You know no one talks to me about being. 12 and out amateur no no one ever brings it up it's the, the old point of amateur especially nowadays like the scene's a lot bigger and a lot better now than it was when I was amateur you gotta fight the best boys and um, the only way you know if you're ready for pros if you can take out the the best boys at at, at amateur you've got the IMAF now which which gives you the chance to, to take them on internationally and, and European uh, on the European scene so yeah it's, it's a great match and it's, it's, it's one a lot of people are looking forward to one I'm looking forward to as well yeah definitely very uh, highly anticipated. Yeah, definitely. What gym is he at then? Is he? Uh, Pride uh, yeah, I think, Pride he, I think he's fighting out Craig of Celtic Pride. Uh, but like Craig Ewers, and I think Dogs of War maybe as well. Um, so a couple of different ones, but yeah. See each other in Tesco's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a good tough test. But um, yeah, it'll be one that a lot of people are looking forward to. Yeah, definitely, mate. What What do you see your vision as? Like, or are you just concentrating on this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, just concentrate one fight at a time. Um, this is obviously a big fight for, for my career, obviously to push me on on the Welsh scene as well. Um, sort of winning this one will sort of solidify me as the, the next big thing to come out of Wales. Um, 
and I've, I, I, you know, I don't want to. I had plans to go to the IMAF and stuff um, at the end of May, but that was postponed until till later in the year. So, you know, things happen for a reason. Obviously, it wasn't meant to be, but but now I got a chance to to become a two division champ on on. Well, yeah, like he's al- he's already the best bantamweight in Wales amateur. This he wins this, this will make him the best featherweight in Wales amateur. What's left to do then? You know, he, he's. He's probably not gonna go pro for a couple of years yet. So now he wins these two, then it's on to, to bigger and better. You know, it's on to the, the Europeans and the worlds and all these different tournaments. So he's doing it. Yeah. He's doing it the right way. He, he's he's taking out the the best possible opponents in front of him, and then he's gonna it'll, it'll build him on nicely to to the IMAFs and and then obviously to pro in in a couple of years time. It's um it's the right way to do it. Any amateur who wants to be in the UFC or Bellator, that's how you should be doing it. You should be looking at the to fight these tough guys at amateur. So when when you go pro, then you got all the experience. I see so many boys get three, four, five, and out amateur against muppets. To be honest, absolute muppets, and then they go pro, and then they have half a fight, and then their ass goes because they, they're not used to to facing adversity. They're not used to to have. It, it reminds you almost of uh, the, like the boxers when they fight ten journeymen. It's like you know they're not, and and again, a lot of them have big amateur careers where they are having fifty fifty fights, but. They're not real fights, especially on these smaller MMA shows. Some some of the some of the matchups you're looking at it and think you can see why a lot of, a lot of gyms sort of send their guys to certain shows because the the matchups are, are favoured, you know. So Definitely. it's it's all about facing a little bit of adversity, you know, f- losing rounds, getting put in bad spots, getting it with shots, and vice versa, you know, letting your hands go a little bit. Ro- Rowan um, Rowan Crocker like done a good interview a couple of months ago. I think it was after one of his fights, and they said to him about going pro, and he was like, "Look, I've just dropped someone for the first time." He's like, I, "I, there's a lot of things I've yet to experience as a fighter, so why would I go pro now when there's so much I haven't got under my belt, and there's plenty of opportunities left at amateur?" So, yeah, yeah if you're if you're a young up and comer and and you want to be a UFC fighter or UFC champion, then you got to be testing yourself, whether that be on the IMAF scene. There's plenty of good fights in Wales and England for people as well. You just got to make sure you're fighting on the on the right shows. Yeah, I suppose though, like as a young lad, I don't know your position or whatever. If you're like full time fighter, if you've got a job or whatever, I suppose some people probably rush it because they're desperate to move forward, aren't they? Because they, do, do you know what I mean? It's like holding yeah, up yeah their but life that's in a way. You, I know you, it's the wrong way. Yeah, to it's the it. wrong way to do it because unfortunately, and and in the harsh reality of it is, to get to the UFC or to to get a battle at all, you got to be full time. There's, there's amateurs like him now. He's an amateur fighter, five fights deep. He's training three, four times a day, six days a week, and that's year round. That's not just for eight weeks. He's not just taking eight weeks off work to train for a fight. That's that's year round. Yeah. You know, people are getting the amateurs are getting more and more athletic. The standard of amateur now compared to ten years ago is incredible. So imagine what's going to be like in another ten years because. You know, what are you now, 20? 20, yeah. So in 10 years, he's only going to be 30. So if he is going to push for the UFC, he'll more than likely still be fighting in 10 years. So imagine the standard is just going up and up and up. It's the harsh reality of it. You know, I I, I try and... And it's easy for me to say because I was always supported to train full-time. But if you haven't got a mortgage to pay and you haven't got kids to feed, you know, and you're an amateur, don't be afraid to live with mum and dad for a little bit longer if they'll have you. Or, you know, rather than going out and... and and it, I'm not down like looking down on anyone. I get that people got to work and got to provide. But if you can afford to to train full time or, or train part like like work part time and and or work a job that works around your training, then you're gonna be in a much much better position at at having a good go at it. Do you know what I mean? Rather than so, because the harsh reality of it is the days of where you could train once a day five five nights a week and, and have a fight. Those days are long gone. You know what I mean? They, they they're long gone. There's there's amateurs now. That would smoke the pros of of even five six years ago. So the level's only going to get better as well, especially with the IMAFs and you know the UFC, the PI stuff like that. There's there's a real route there now for anyone. You just got to make you know you got to decide. It's got to be a life, unfortunately. You know there's got to be sacrifices made. There's got to be times where you're gonna have to sort of be poor for a little bit. I know I know it's sad to say and and it's harsh to say because some people haven't got that luxury, but if you can afford to or work some out or grab a couple of sponsors, it's it's what it's what you gotta do. I think though as well, when when you're younger you probably want all that stuff, like the the money you can bring and things. But as I've got older I realise like less it's less that makes me happier, you know, like all the fixed shit you buy and whatever. It's nice for like a couple of minutes, isn't it? Of course. Or what car you drive or whatever. 
But then I find like after a certain period of time, it doesn't matter anyway. So you're better off like when you're younger, pushing for your big goals, isn't it? Because yeah, well, like you it's said, it's a one-off opportunity. Really. Of course, if you can get the UFC and 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 make good money, or get the Bellator and make good money, even even there's other shows out there that you can make good money on. Um, then you can you can enjoy all that. Then you know, sa- you sometimes you just got to sacrifice a little bit, especially as a youngster. You know, there's so many boys I know who are like thirty odd now, and they sort of. And not just in MMA. I know I know boys who play rugby and football who had the world at their feet and at, at 15, 16, 17, they'd rather go on the piss and and all that than, than, than go training. And I, and I know probably looking back now, they th- they probably think to themselves, you know, fucking hell, I wish I sacrificed a little bit more as a youngster. I wish I, you know, slammed it up a little bit more. And um, that, that's just how it is. Without sacrifice, the, the rewards don't come, you know, that, unfortunately. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. It's hard when you're young, isn't it, to have that vision. Obviously, you've got it because yeah. you're doing it, aren't you? And you've put yourself in the position, like so. Yeah, it's, it, it takes a, a special kind of mindset. You know, it is it is tough because you come you come out of school or college and you get a job, and you know, next thing you know, you got a thousand pound in your bank account. You f- you think you're a millionaire, don't you? At the time, I've I've been here myself, and uh, I I'd get paid hundred and fifty quid a week for Vartling cars three days a week and I'd think, Fucking I minted. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the reality of it is, you know, it's not always the case. And uh yeah, I think uh, but I I don't think I'm out of order as such and saying anyone who, who wants to, to make a go at it and make it their career and their and their livelihood, you've 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 gotta go full time, unfortunately. Or or at least, you know, there's gotta be days where you can train even if it's only say three days a week, you can get a couple of sessions in a day. They, you've got to sort of or work around it. Like Look at Josh Reed. Josh Reed's a full-time painter. He still trains twice a day. He'll train twice in the night, or he'll, he'll get up before work and do a run. You know, sacrifice don't necessarily mean giving up your job as such, but you've got to be prepared to put in the extra hours, go to bed a little bit later, or, or get up a little bit earlier. It's, it's just how it is. And, you know, Levi and, and a couple of the other youngsters in the gym, Yoan, Liam, um, Bevan, Jack, Kane, they're all doing the right things to to give up their self the best opportunity to to you know push on and, and, and give themselves a real chance of, of making it their, their career and making it how, how, how they make a living but uh, yeah it's, you've got to go for it go for it while you're young anyway yeah. <laughs> when did you make that decision? Um, so I, I, I started um, training about halfway through sixth form um, and then I was I, I was sort of getting towards the end of, towards the end of that and uh just wasn't really for me like I wanted to go to uni at, at first and stuff like that I wanted to go and um, learn to be an architect enjoyed my art enjoyed my drawing and stuff like that I was quite clued up with the maths and, and, and stuff but then I was like it was like seven years in uni or something like that I was like do I really do I really want it and yeah. it's like I wasn't really motivated to do it and at the same time I, I started doing like jujitsu and stuff and, and I was enjoying it and I was fortunate enough to have that that option to uh, to go and train and Fair you so, know, so you're 20 now. So it's 20 half now, yeah. Six films, like 17. Yeah, so, so it's only I, like I, I started. You've been training three years. Yeah, that's crazy. I, was, you know, yeah, I thought you'd been like since you were like 12 well, or something. Four years. Yeah, like. I, yeah. I started started four years ago. Um, on, and obviously, like 18 months of that was the pandemic as well. So I missed out on about 18 months of competition there. So that's mad, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. And this thought. is what I'm saying <laughs> with, with the level at the minute and the growth that these, these kids are developing at is scary. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like you said, four, four maximum four years of training and, and 18 months of that has been no no competition. It's a mad, the growth of the sport and the boys in it at the minute is, is, is yeah. so fast. You know, you've you've got to look at it and think, you know, I've got to go for it. It's now or never. You know, like you said, he made his, he could have gone to uni or, you know, worked for his old man or whatever. But he, he made a decision, and uh, obviously, it's why he's why he's doing so well. It's why he, why he's done so well so quick as well because he's dedicated his life to it. Yeah, it's like um, who's it? Cyril Garn. How long has he been training? It's yeah, like that's four it. years or something, <laughs> isn't it? A mad story about Cyril Garn. Uh, Col- Colin Mould was telling me this the other day. Colin runs Cage Warriors Wales with my old man. He said a couple of years ago, I think he was. It was sort of when Cage Warriors were coming to um, the Newport Centre, and they would have like an amateur card and a pro card, and. Um, Colin would sort of so he and Dean's like the cage warriors matchmaker, but Colin, if he if he could help out, would would help match the the pro prelims. You know, if he was was looking for certain weights, and uh, he had Cyril Garn's coach at the time message him and say, "Oh, we've we've got this heavyweight. He's like one and zero. Oh. Um, 
Cyril Gann, if if Cage Warriors want him, <laughs> let us know. I, but obviously, there's no heavyweights in the UK. But I said, fuck me, that would have been a mad one. <laughs> Cyril Gann smoked some fat guy in the yeah. new centre. <laughs> Killer, wouldn't he? That's, it's crazy, though, his story, though, isn't it? Was he like four years in or something? It's like crazy. That? Obviously, yeah. got like a Muay Thai background and all that. But when you think, I think he went from his pro debut to fighting him for the UFC title in like three years. Yeah. That's it's yeah. madness. Absolute man, and nearly won it, didn't he? Yeah. Like, you know, let's be honest. He could that fight, uh, Francis deserved to win, but the fight could have gone either way. You know, he only needed one more round, or if he needed not to sit back on that leg lock, he yeah. probably, probably, probably would have won the fight. Do you, why is there not many heavyweights in the UK then? How come Cage Warriors don't kind of corner that? Is it, um, I think smaller people, I think, <laughs> I think a lot of it, you know. <laughs> If you're a big lump and you live in Wales, what do you do? You play rugby usually, don't you? You know, a lot of the big... They, you look at um, look at the Dragons and the Ospreys, or you look at the Welsh the Welsh rugby squad, they would all make fucking brilliant heavyweights, but they get paid a hell of a lot more money, early on especially, to, to, to be pro rugby players. And I think maybe in 10 years' time, we'll see a lot more heavyweights because MMA is like fast becoming a readily available option, whereas... You know, for someone, so go back 10 years ago when I was 16, there was no 16-year-old big lumps looking to do MMA full-time. They, they all good rugby players, and I think that's what it is at the minute. I don't think it's a fact that there's, there's smaller people in Wales. It's just a fact that it's not so much a, it's not your go, it wasn't the go-to, especially when I was a kid. You know, there's probably five people in my school year that knew what MMA was, let alone wanted to train it. So um, I think in years to come, it'll, it'll obviously, put, it's like in America, you know, a lot of, a lot of these big guys are play NFL or basketball, whereas now, you know, MMA is starting to become come that option. Do you know what I mean? Like if if Francis Ngannou was born in America, he probably would have gone into the NFL or would have gone into the NBA. But because he was from where he was from, he ended up going down the fighting route. So I think that's where it is. But yeah. I'd love to see. I love watching heavyweights fight. You know, yeah, you know, you know when you watch yeah. a heavyweight fight, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a knockout or it's going to be a fast finish. So I, I love watching them fight. I, I wish there was more heavyweights in the in the UK. To be honest, I don't even. I think it's been like from for as long as I can remember. I think it's been one heavyweight cage warriors champion for as long as I can remember. Big attack. I can't remember his name. I fought in the same cards him once. Big massive Italian guy, skate real scary, real scary guy. Sure, and then right, he went something like I was a something like that, wasn't it? And then he went to one FC and. <laughs> there's there's no more heavyweights there. So any James? heavyweights out there, get get on uh, get on the mats. Let's uh, let's have a heavyweight champion or something. Come from Wales. Yeah. Was it James Haskell? He was gonna have a fight for Bellator, and he was talking about it flat out. But yeah. Never, never come to nothing. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember doing a uh, a little like scrum five segment to promo one of my fights, and uh, me and Ross Moriarty <laughs> become quite pally, and we used to chat online. <laughs> And uh, they announced, obviously, Haskell was fighting for uh, for Bellator, and I was like, here's your fucking chance. I was like, let's get you in the gym. <laughs> let's get you an MMA fight. And he was like, because he's boxed and stuff, Rox, uh, Ross. I think he's got a, a boxing family. Like, He's like, oh, I would do it. He's like, I just need to get a bit of groundwork in. And I was like, imagine how they could market the fuck out of that. Oh, you? Massive, in, English it? International versus Welsh International right. in a pro MMA fight. Who was the one guy that did it? Um, I'm sure there was a rugby player that had it. Had he had a fight, Haskell? I don't know, did he? I, I didn't think he had, but maybe he had. Did he have it against like some really like chubby heavyweight guy who'd had like two fights? I'm sure them. there's a rugby player that has had an MMA fight, but I can't fucking for the life of me think who it is. What am I thinking of? Uh, the WWE fighter in Bellator, Jack Swagger. Oh, maybe yeah. I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah. yeah, but he's good. He can wrestle. He's a bit like Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Like, although like they got this WWE gimmick, he's actually got a good. Good collegiate wrestling background. But yeah, uh, Moriarty is not too late. It's not too late. <laughs> I went to watch Andy Powell do like a white collar boxing. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that was funny. I like to see, we, we, let's get Gezi on the mats. Let's get Gezi, he's going to have a boxing yeah. fight. Let's just get a bit of jits behind him. Let's get, let's get, let's get him on uh, on the MMA scene. Charity match at least. Who's he fighting? He was going to fight, um, what's his name? Uh, Reese Evans, I think his name is, from, from Blackwood uh, in like a charity match. Reese is a it was a pro. I don't know if he still boxes you now, but he was a pro boxer. Um, I think he was like three or four and oh. And I think they're going to do it to raise some money for charity. And uh, I guess he broke his hands. He couldn't do it. I know Gavin Reese offered to step in. I seen on Facebook. So it, yeah. I'd, I'd buy a ticket to go and watch that. I, I've been to watch Gav a couple of times. You know, especially the size of him now. He's fucking massive now. So <laughs> I can't imagine he's carrying a little bit more power. The oh, shape of him now than what he was at sixty one kilo. He, he's got to be about ninety k now, Gav. So of so muscle like as well. Like, yeah. yeah, he's a little bulldozer. So anytime he's fighting, I'm in. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, I make all these funny matchups, like, and it they're, they're kind of the things that like draw the eyes in it. Like you see it in all the big sports now, the thriller and everything. Yeah, you do. You just can't help it, can you? Although you know, like, it's a facade, you can't help but watch it, can you? If you're into martial arts and you want some fresh gear that helps you stand up from the crowd, then be sure to head over to xmarshall.com. They have all sorts of gear aimed at everyone with specific needs. There's currently a massive deal on where you can buy four sets of gear and get the fifth for free. Make sure to click the link down below and use our code tanked up to get 10% off when you order shop at xmarshall.com today and remember to use the code tanked up for 10% off yeah i know it's, it's like jake paul like you see him he's I, he's talking about like he, he's obviously boxing and stuff but he's talking about like he'd fight Maz vidal or mcgregor in an mma fight and it wouldn't be out of the ordinary like i Maybe five years ago, I'd be like, nah, that's not going to happen. But <laughs> nowadays, you just don't know. You just don't know with him. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? He, he's talking about fighting Bisping. Have you, have you seen that? He's not yeah, going to fight Bisping. call him out, isn't he? But, Fucking uh, Bisping's got one eye. I was, like, yeah, they're never going to clear Bisping to fight, nah, are they? I know. Yes. It'll have to be like an exhibition or something. Anderson yeah. Silva, that's the fight to do. I think Anderson's oh, fighting in the next... Him. Yeah. Anderson's fighting in the next week or two. So I'd like to see... Uh, I think Anderson and him would be... And it'd, it'd show how good Jake is because... All right, Anderson's old and a little bit past it, but he just beat uh, Chavez Jr. And I know Chavez Jr. is far from his prime, but so is Anderson. And, 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 he, and he, he he beat him quite comfortably. So, you know, if he can outbox or knock out Silver, then, you know, we, we can start maybe looking at him then as, uh, you know, and thinking this, or maybe this guy can go on to do something. Um, but I think he'll fight. I think he'll fight Tommy Fury. I, 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 think, he, I think Fury will lose that, I reckon. I don't know. Yeah. I I reckon yeah. yeah it's a it? close fight. It's it's yes. Yeah, uh, I would definitely watch it. Like I think it's, it's a well uh, picked fight for Jake Paul. Like, I think yeah. he could lose it as well. Man, Tommy's like throws serious power, doesn't he? But yeah, it's um, it's a it's a fair matchup mm. because they're both. Tommy's obviously a little bit more well schooled, but in terms of skill wise, like I think they're very si- like similar. They both they can both punch, and I think Tommy's probably the better boxer. Jake probably hits a little bit harder than he so and. No one can then say that oh he's not fighting no real boxers like uh, Ed Ewan said it this week. He said you, you know we we can take the piss all we want, but in credit credit to Jake Paul, he did sign up to fight Tommy Fury. You know, and Tommy Fury is the one that pulled out. Like Tommy, he may not be like British or European champion level, but he is a real boxer. You know, he's had amateur fights. His brother's the fucking best fighter on, on the yeah. planet, or one of the best heavyweights of all time. So obviously it's in his blood. So if if he's game to fight him and he beats him, then uh, then I think. We're all in serious trouble then because then you'll really start <laughs> fucking mouthing off. He'd be on the oh, hype yeah. train then, wouldn't he? Uh, oh, yeah. He'd be, he'd, like something like that or like fighting Anderson or whatever could lead him into like a McGregor boxing fight, couldn't it? You just never, in like two years' time, you don't know what's going to happen. With I it. honestly believe within like two, three years, Jake Paul will box Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor. Yeah. And then I think McGregor and Diaz will end up having a boxing fight as well. <laughs> like, That'll be quality. Yeah, man. honestly, yeah. like, me, you'll definitely box Diaz. Because I think that's why Diaz wants this, his last fight done. He wants to go and box, I think. And um, make sure that happens over 12 rounds and Nate will smoke him, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, to be honest, Connor would smoke him as well. The only thing with him is the size. You know, Jake, Jake's like 210 pound walking around. I know McGregor's big at the minute, but he's not. he can't be 210 no. pound. And fit, can he? He can't be. No, like, yeah, oh. exactly. To go 12. But. You know, and I think it's what Jake Paul's doing for the sport is great, but you you can't deny that it'd be good to see him just get cracked. Yeah. <laughs> Even just like well, one shot Woodley landed, yeah. you just thought, finally, like finally. But someone like McGregor and and Nate, they can obviously box a little bit better than Wood. Like, but Wood, Woodley did 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 well, didn't he? To an extent, it's just I felt sorry for him after I know. it because he seemed like. You know, in between the first and the second fight, he seemed well desperate, didn't he? Like, some of the things he was putting yeah. out, I was thinking... You like, almost feel sorry for him because, like, he's had such a... I know he lost his last two MMA fights, but there was there was a stage where people were saying, you know, we can start arguing that he, he he's a, the welterweight uh, goat over GSP. That's how good he was at one stage. And then, you know, unfortunately now, he's probably going to be remembered for the guy that... that that Jake Paul knocked out, you know, and it's it's terrible to say when you think he's like a five time mm-hmm. or five defense UFC champion, but it's become a meme, isn't he? Yeah, he's unfor- <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. The internet never fails. What uh, what I was gonna say, but um, how did you first decide about coming training? Give him a bit of a um, bit of insight into that. Well, 
to be honest, like I, I did and dab out of different sports and stuff as a youngster. Like, but I wasn't I, like I wasn't a sporty kid at all. Like I obviously started at like sixteen, but I wasn't doing much up until up until then. Really, I didn't even know. I didn't even watch MMA at that yeah. point. I never heard of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I never heard of Jack Shaw when when I was uh, when I first went up, and um, I didn't know nothing about it. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, and um, my old man sort of sort of all out. Uh, I think he spoke to spoke to Jack maybe about going up and and having a session. Um, I went down to Lou Long a little bit as well with because he's obviously over with Gary. Um, just did a couple of privates down there, and um, and yeah, just I, I went. And enjoyed it, and uh, I'm still here now. And you know, it's well, he's not it's just one of them things. There's like, a little dodgy picture somewhere of him uh, in his in his little boxing vest, and he's about ten <laughs> years old. I have to get his old yeah. man to send it so he can chuck it up on the screen. <laughs> yeah, we, um, yeah. Well, I, I did a bit of boxing. <laughs> I didn't want to mention that, like, did he? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I did. I did like kickboxing and boxing and stuff like that. Like, as when I was real young, like no older than ten, and. Um, I stuck a box in probably the most. I had two exhibition fights, um, and it was it was good. But it was one of them things that I I wasn't really there for myself. I was there for more more my own man. And you see it sometimes with, with some of the kids that come through the gym. Like we'll teach the the kids class, the MMA and the the BJJ, and you can you can tell the difference between the ones that want to be there and the ones that don't. And and I think I was one of those kids that didn't really want to be there. And um, I think if it's meant to be. I'll, you'll find your way back into it, and obviously, I found my way back into into doing sport and whatever. But I think you have got to give your kid that option of like, you know, do you want to do it or do you not? Because we don't get we don't get paid or anything like that to to go and coach the the kids. We just do it out of out of you know wanting to. And yeah. um, you know, if you got some kid that just doesn't want to be there, messing about and distracting other people that do want to be there, it's um, it's hard work, man. But um, yeah, it's good. That's a really good point. It's uh, it's a big thing, you know. Like there's there's so many people that like want to push their kids in in certain directions, and uh, if if a kid doesn't want to do something, ultimately they want to do it. You know, my my old man would be the first to say he would have loved for me to stick rugby out. Um, I was half decent. I was even half decent at rugby. I was never going to be a professional or anything, but I was half decent. And you know, in the end, I just complained and protested that much that. He obviously realized, like, look, there's enough. I'm not. No matter how much hard I try, he's gonna go down this route, not this one. So, he, they, you know, you gotta give you like, like you said, if they don't want to be there, ultimately they, they're gonna let you know one way or another. And yeah. um, you can't, especially a sport like this, is tough. You know, what I mean, you see, see, we see some kids in the gym, and you can tell they're, they're natural born scrappers. They love it. They they can't wait to spar when they're there. They want to train hard, like like young Lexi. Um, yeah, you know, Karis. Uh, Pip, uh, Karis is Pip. No, what the fuck I'm on about. Um, <laughs> Karis, even his younger brother. You know, we got a couple of young kids there now, Henry and all that. And, and you can see they've only been coming a couple of years or a couple of months. Some of them, but but they naturally they want to be there. You know, they can't wait to get through the door. When they leave, they they're buzzing and they can't wait to come back tomorrow. Um, and and that just makes a better environment for everyone. When you got kids that that you know generally want to be there to learn and get better, then then it's it's great. Um. But like you said, some, sometimes you do end up in sports because your parents want you to do it, or not necessarily that they're forcing you to do it, or they think, that oh, yeah. you should get into this, you'll be good at this, and it doesn't always go that way. So it's always better to have a kid or a student, an adult that wants to be there, not that's sort of being forced to be there. I, I remember t- I taught the youth offenders a bit of MMA years ago, me and, me and Marshman, and uh, there'd, there'd be 20 of them turn up, and three of them would want to be there. And you know, in the end, you're just like... There's no point. Yeah. There. What's the point in bringing us? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a good point though, isn't it? Because I think like, if you're doing something you don't want to do all the time, you just yeah. become resentful anyway, don't you? So exactly. Well, they, exactly. You, you you're gonna hate it even more than what you know, I'm not. There's some kids that probably don't mind it, but you keep forcing them to go, they're gonna end up hating it then, and they're gonna end up rebelling. So yeah, you're, you're bang on. Yeah, yeah. So that whole mean. thing about um, like discipline and sacrifices. Then, mm-hmm. if if you know you send your kid to uh, to train at a young age. They're gonna grow up. They, if they ain't bothered about it as a kid, then obviously they're gonna choose to go out with their mates. So, you know, I don't know what, what I, I don't know, go for a meal or something like that. When you gotta be dieting and stuff like that, and it's like, you sh- stuff like that. You just can't, you can't do. Like you gotta, you gotta want to do it yourself. You can't, you can't have somebody else 
no, wanting you to do it, you've got to do it for yourself. Otherwise, you're just not going to have that discipline. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with encouraging your kid. You know, like it, there there was times as a youngster, obviously, I, I was I'd be competing and stuff, and and I would want to miss training. Now and like you know, I'd be like, oh, can I go up with the boys tonight? And, and you know, my old man would never be one to say no, but you know, he wouldn't be afraid to me because you know, yeah, you are competing in two weeks, so why don't you why don't you come train and go out after training? Um, you know, so there's nothing wrong with a little bit of encouragement and uh, giving them a gentle push now and then. But obviously, like you said, you, you don't want to be forcing no no one to be there, especially a youngster, because yeah, you know that th- there's a, plenty of other things they could be doing and. Uh, it's a tough old sport at the end of the day, especially for a kid. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not not easy on the body. It, 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 it's a bit like rugby in terms. You know, you're taking bumps and and lumps as a kid. So yeah, if um if they want to be there, great. If not, let them sort of find their own way. They may come back to it in years. I know I know boys who trained to me. Some of my friends as kids didn't enjoy it, and then three four years later, when they're adults, they're back in the gym and they say, "I wish I stuck it as a youngster," but they almost needed that that time away and that bit of freedom to to realize that. You know, I do enjoy it, and and I and I do want to go. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. you know, people's people's situation changed, didn't it? You know, as a kid, if you're playing football, rugby, and you want to go to MMA, naturally you'll gravitate towards one. But in a couple of years' time, you might not want to play football. You might might not want to play. That's what happened to me, anyway. You know, I enjoyed rugby and MMA, and I was doing both. And then naturally, I started gravitating towards fighting, which made me resent rugby a little bit. Yeah. No doubt, there's there's people who gravitate towards other sport which makes them resent fighting so there's nothing wrong with it it's just uh sometimes you gotta give them a little bit of freedom freedom of choice i suppose yeah well i think when you're like for me anyway when i was 13 14 15 them years i was just so easily influenced as well do you know I mean? that's when i ended up yeah. going out like, drinking and doing all them sorts of things yeah exactly did you do all that like in your break in between yeah it's, back? yeah it's like um you know, I love a I love a drink with my mates and stuff like that. But it, it's stuff like that now that I've got to sacrifice. And Definitely. you know, I tell my mate, they're like, "Oh yeah, um, we'll we'll go out on a on a night out or something. Just don't drink or something like that." It's just like, you know, it work, might work once or twice, but it's just it's just not the same. And um, you know, some people would would take that option of going out sober, but but give in as well. But that, you know, I got the mindset of like, you know, I'm not gonna give in. I, you know, if I'm if I've got a fight coming up, I'm not gonna drink or. Yeah. Or if if I've got to just not go at all, then I'm not going to go. It's, but I got to the point now. I'm I, I'm sort of five fight deep, five fights deep, and um, they understand that now. And um, if I tell them I ain't doing something, and they <laughs> they know I ain't going to do it. Like, yeah, um, it. but in, in fairness, they support me now, and and they know that I got to make the right choices. And you know, years down the line, when I'm in the UFC or uh, you know fighting for like a cage warriors title or something like that, then. They're gonna be there and uh, supporting me just as, just the same, like so. Yeah, I think when you first go on like any sort of path, like even when I first started doing like podcasts, where everyone's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like, do you know, it just doesn't make yeah. sense to people yeah. when you've got like a vision, does it? But as long as you can keep it like strong in your own mind exactly. and keep pushing forward, yeah. I think pe- people massive, don't like, people don't see like everything that goes on behind the scenes. Um, there's a lot building up into, into into one fight, and to you know, for me, uh, one fight is is you know. Eight to twelve weeks of of hard work and, and dedication and sacrifice, but for for them it's it's sort of nine nine to fifteen minutes just watching me in the cage and you know they just don't see everything that that this get that gets put into it and um, you know I think that's that's one thing that that people just don't appreciate um, for for fighters definitely. Oh, yeah. um, definitely it's a lonely old sport you know it's yeah the, it's the same old saying is it looks like it's you know I, how many times do you hear people say oh you know, you get you get you get your bonus, whatever. You get paid. Oh, not bad for, for fifteen minutes. You know, it's not. F- it's n- you see the fifteen minutes, but like yeah. I said, you don't see the eight, twelve weeks in preparation, the diet, in the, the the time away from your family and your your misses and your friends, and like missing the amount of fucking birthday meals and nights out and yeah. anniversaries and stuff. I I've missed over, and I've been I've been fighting over ten years now. You know, competitively and the amount. I'm not like I, s- I always harp on. I'd almost brag about it now. That I'm, I haven't celebrated a birthday since I was since my 18th. I don't think so. You know, sometimes, but there's life after fighting as well. You know, you can't fight until yeah. you're 60. You know what I mean? It's not like uh, it's not like a job in terms of where you do it till you're 65 and then you have your 10 years retirement before you pop your clocks. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's you can only fight till till what? If you're lucky, 40. Maybe forty five if you're a freak like your your Romero who's fighting. Yeah, that's your rolling, isn't it? Um, you just keep going till he's about yeah. sixty, I expect. And uh, there's life after fighting as well. So, oh, speaking of 
Joel Romero is fighting tonight. Shout out to Lewis Long as well. Who's, yeah. who's, oh, yeah, yeah. I know this is obviously going to come out after um, after Lou's fight, but Lou's fighting tonight. He's got a real tough match uh, against a UFC vet um, out in France in enemy territory for him because obviously the guy's French. So, yeah, but I'm looking forward to seeing him back in there. And, uh, you know, we're all rooting for him. And, and I'm sure you get a win and move on to those rankings and eh? call out some of the big names, MVP and... Um, well, Paul Daly's retired, but, but some some of the other big, uh, you know, there's a very deep division while waiting in Balto, so it'd be nice to see him mixing it with the big dogs as well. Definitely, mate. He looks so relaxed as well, didn't he? I see him like at the weigh in and stuff. You went to give him like a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Less him. Yeah. <laughs> Got paid on the knuckle bump, yeah. but uh, I sh- I'm sure Lou will make him uh, pay. You'll make him pay for that yeah. one. Yeah. Like. yeah, his last fight was crazy as well. Is that the one? Right. Was the last he one? He brought the glove. Didn't yeah, he? yeah, one punch, one punch. He busted the glove. <laughs> He came on my podcast after that, and he said to me, "I didn't want to make Bellator look bad, like, but <laughs> fucking didn't mean to break." Yeah. Sort yeah. your fucking gloves out. <laughs> yeah, he's funny. Like, no. what, I wonder what if he hadn't stopped him, what they would have done. Like, yeah, because cause I can't imagine there's many pairs of gloves hanging no. about ringside. Because yeah, obviously no. they, they, they they give you your gloves out the back, don't they? It's the bare knuckle then, pretty much. Isn't he? Yeah, that yeah. Like, it's a very. Imagine they got to the second round, and he's yeah, like, "My gloves." Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you do? No padding, like. But yeah, it's been good to watch lose. Um, Growth as a fight like the last couple of years, he's especially since he's gone to Bellator. I know he's got his, 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 his I think he's a son. I don't want to say he's his son, he's got a daughter, but I'm sure he's, I'm pretty sure he's got a son. Yeah, he, um, uh, he told me he was going to call him Dick, <laughs> <laughs> Dick Long. Dick Long. <laughs> oh, nice, but um, like since he's gone in Bellator, especially like he's really like focused in, and you see, he just seems a different animal in it. A minute is is his dedication to training, uh, his mindset. He seems in like a much happier place as well. I know, like when he was in cage wars a little bit, like and when he was cutting into lightweight and stuff, he 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 just seemed like not he was out of love with the sport, but he just didn't seem like the same man he is today. Like today, you like you watch the weigh ins and like you said, you see the fight week pictures. He's just so relaxed and looked like he's really enjoying it. And uh, it'd be great to see him. And, and obviously, Brett's in Balto now. It'd be great to see him bring a show to Wales. I know I, I wouldn't be like them coming to the motor point wouldn't wouldn't be a you know impossible. I'd love love this yet, and especially have them two up there. And maybe Lou against MVP and Brett against uh, I don't know. Okay, now a top a top five, maybe Apache Mix or uh, Archuleta or uh, Sergio Pettis, someone like that. That that that'd be good. So yeah, we're rooting for him, and uh, I'm sure he get a win. Definitely. Should we wrap it up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a good little innings there, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. Thanks for coming on, mate. Appreciate, Appreciate it. you having me on. Yes, yeah, Le- Levi is officially the first guest. So when he goes on now to be two weight champ and IMAF champ and uh, UFC champ and all that, hopefully he'll, uh, he remembers Roots That's Show. It. And uh, fingers crossed. He, he, can give us, he can give us a bit of promo then and uh, <laughs> pull some sponsors in he for goes us. Both yeah. Ways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, cheers, boys. Nice one. Yeah, cheers, appreciate boys. it. Cheers, easy. mate. If you're into martial arts and you want some fresh gear that helps you stand out from the crowd, then be sure to head over to xmarshall.com. They have all sorts of gear aimed at everyone's specific needs. There's currently a massive deal on where you can buy four sets of gear and get the fifth for free. Make sure to click the link down below and use our code TANKEDUP to get 10% off when you order. Shop at xmarshall.com today and remember to use the code TANKEDUP for 10% off. Get